Hi gang, Scott here. Continuing our march through the filters in On One Effects, we've reached the Sharpening Filter. Now this is one that I, I don't reach for very often, but like many filters, you, know, you don't reach for them often, but they do have their purpose. So we'll run through what the various options are, what the sliders do. I'll show you an example or two of how sharpening works. And real quick, if you like tutorials like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're thinking about adding any of On One products to your toolkit, check the show notes, there is an offer code down there. Save you a little bit of money, gives me a little bit of support, and I can come back and do more videos like this. So let's have a look at the sharpening filter. I have this photo here loaded in the effects module, and uh, let me just remove, I've done some work here, I'll just remove the sharpening here. We'll start from the top by adding our sharpening filter to the filter stack. Now like all of our filters, we have masking and blending options and opacity and a few of the various built-in styles. But the magic of the sharpening filter, what makes it its special thing, is the different types of sharpening. There are three different types, high pass, progressive, and unsharp. You can see high pass is the default. So what do these do? Um, high pass um, is actually probably a best choice if your original photo is, is kind of a little blurry, a little soft, a little soft. It's not going to magically make something show up and be in focus. Like this photo here, it's a little bit soft. If I click the fix focus style, we'll see that high pass is selected, some values are dialed in. And if I zoom in here, you know, we'll see a little bit of a change before and after, right? There's some there's some uh, some artifacting there. But like in the brickwork, there's like reflections down in here, right? Before and after, and we can see some improvement there. But I want to highlight these two different sliders for you though, halo and amount. Amount makes sense, right? How much or how little are we doing here? But halo, this is, a, this is an interesting one, and pay attention to, let's move this right over next to our slider so we can see this. Like the dark band that is around the inner edge of say this particular window, as I move halo around, you're going to see that black and light thing show up. So this is something that we normally don't want to have in our photos, right? This haloing thing. But when you have a little bit of a blurry photo, sometimes that kind of helps with making it look like it's in focus. Uh, really, uh, the, the filter is not going to magically make one of your out of focus photos be in focus. Uh, but if you do notice you're using sharpening and you're seeing kind of this interesting artifacting, almost like this weird shadowing kind of thing, this halo. Take a look at that halo slider. Now what about the other two modes? We have progressive and unsharp. I'm actually going to come back to progressive in a minute, talk about unsharp mask first. This is kind of a generally decent type to select for overall basic sharpening, right? And I'll push the amount really far so we can see that there is some impact here. The bricks are a little bit sharper. We're going to notice it a lot more down in this section here, right, before and after you can see that like things that are very bright like these under bellies like the window sills there those are getting popped we still have that halo control so we can we can control the haloing and you can see a lot more uh, activity happening here and then we have threshold what threshold does is try to protect areas that are more uniform like for example let's go up to this sky area here I push the amount very far, I push threshold, we see like the bricks become soft again, right in here. Let me push that right over here, right next to, we get nice and close on our sliders here. There's our, oh, that halo, threshold. Push threshold over, pull it back. We're going to see that things just get a little softer. They just, you know, because what threshold is doing is saying, I see uniform tones. Don't apply the sharpening there. Try to keep those smooth. This is more for like a landscape where you've got a blue sky. You have gradations of blue. You don't want sharpening to find those gradations and start to make them crisp. You still want to have that smooth fade. So Threshold tries to help control that for you. Now the last option we have is Progressive. And as its name suggests, Progressive will target sharper, smaller details 
or sorry, sharpen smaller details more than larger areas, right? So as we play with progressive, we push the amount really far. You know, notice that, say, for example, maybe comparing this grayish reflection here versus the bricks. I push that farther. I see more action happening in the small details of the bricks or down here more details in that like reflected pattern here and less in these more uniform areas of these uh, I, I don't know what these are like window shades or something because progressive is saying let me go and try and find smaller details accentuate those but back off a little bit on the larger ones and we do have that threshold slider again uh, we can probably see that even better now with progressive. We push detail all the way and amount all the way. Uh, there's kind of some grunge and some slop and things happening in these white whitish panels, a very gray overcast day. I start pushing threshold. We'll see those start to fade away because it's softening those areas. Now, of course, it's softening the entire photo. So you always have your, your balancing act to do with any kind of sharpening. But that's what these three different modes do. Uh, in practice, um, I tend not to use high pass. I'll use progressive or unsharp. And uh, the thing about the sharpening filter is this is all for visual sharpening. This has nothing to do with preparing for print. If you're doing print work or so forth, despite the fact that it has a print style, it's really not designed to do pre-sharpening for print. You're doing that, use the print module. So I'll tend to use screen as my starting point and then I'll adjust from there. And you know, for this photo, I'm kind of balancing the red brick versus this, this other brick down here. So, you know, maybe a little more sharpening and perhaps a touch more detail and push it all the way and pull it back. It gets very subtle with progressive because it is progressive. Now, something like that. Let's go ahead and zoom out a quick before and after, before and after. I'll zoom in here. We can really see that detail popping here before and after. So it has its place. It's helpful. Uh, but the you know, key things is the unsharp mask is a little aggressive. The high pass, which will help to make photos a little bit uh, recovered as far as like blurriness, it's not magical. <laughs> It'll do a little bit, but not a lot. Actually, I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Uh, and then the progressive is the one I think is, is the most useful, but this is for visual sharpening only, not for print prep. Uh, let's take a look at one of these like out of focus type examples. All right, so this photo here is not sharp. It's out of focus. If I zoom in here, you can see that it's just blurry. I, I, I messed up the shot, right? And if I zoom up over into like these mid-ground hills, it's soft, there's, there's camera shake, there's jitter here. Sharpening has that fix focus, if I click on that, and it's like a little better before and after, but it's really not doing anything that like an AI powered tool would do to try to figure out the camera shake, or like in Photoshop where you can suggest the direction that the camera movement happened and Photoshop would try to compensate. So this is not going to address out of focus photos. It'll add a little bit. Like if we're looking at a thumbnail, you know, before and after, yeah, there's some improvement. I can push up the amount and we get a little more crispness through that, uh, or I pushed halo up, sorry, amount. And we can get a little more crispness through there. But when we start looking, we're still just gonna see softness, right? Before and after. Okay, uh, it's really, really doing more of a, a push on contrast and contrast is giving us a little bit of an illusion that things are crisper. But when we look closely, these rocks are not soft and fuzzy like that. They are rocks and they're just not going to be fixed by the sharpening filter in Photo Raw. So there are limits on what you can do with sharpening. You, you got you to get, get the focus right. You got to get the, uh, the, the photo to be sharp to begin with. And then use something like sharpening to 
accent or bring out really good details like the previous photo we were looking at where there was the reflections and the brickwork and things like that. Sharpening might help you out there a little bit. Uh, so that is it. That's the sharpening tool in, uh, on One Effects. And if you got other questions about it, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.